All right, continuing. Um, let's see, uh, GG was uh, asking about, uh, find your version of worship in the Bible. You won't. Well, come on, GG. I'm not just making stuff up. All right, so um, we see, uh, like, in John 4, Verse 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So in the 1828, oh, what do you call this guy? M. Schaefer? He's got a name. This dictionary from 1828, uh, it gives a number of uh, definitions uh, for the word worship. Excellent, excellence of character, dignity, worth worthiness okay so uh you know like you when you're for example you're looking at john 4 god is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth and so look for one of these that best defines that use of the word worship right um ethelin born in Newmold state and mocha worship and i don't know what this is in the sense the word is nearly or quite obsolete but hence all right Okay, a title of honor used in addresses to certain magistrates and other respectable character. My father desires your worship's company. A term of ironical respect, chiefly and eminently the act of paying divine honors to, to the supreme being, or the reverence and homage paid to him in religious exercises consisting in adoration, confession, prayer, thanksgiving, and the like. The worship of God is is an eminent part of religion prayer is a chief part of religious worship the homage paid to idols or false gods by pagans as the worship of i think it's supposed to be of isis honor respect <clears throat> civil deference okay that <clears throat> excuse me then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee all right there's a this is the the one that i like to point out the most here number six because i think it gets overlooked it's a very simple honor respect civil deference as opposed to indifference all right so uh like in luke 14 right there it is in case you had any doubts then shalt thou have worship in the presence respect right respect and that's as simple as it it doesn't mean it doesn't have to mean bowing down and and uh you know saying whatever and, and all that stuff. That's what I used to think. And then, um, you know, I, I started wondering about this word because as you read the Bible, you start to uh, see these this word used in other examples as well. Uh, in spe uh, and especially when it comes to worshiping the beast. Does that, because you'll see a lot of people teaching that there's going to come a time when the whole world is going to bow down and wave their arms at the beast, at this Antichrist. So that's never going to happen. That doesn't even happen for the Pope. I mean, maybe it does, but uh, I guess probably does. But uh, not the whole world, for sure, right? And so this uh, usage of the word worship needs to be defined needs to be understood what the definition is and it's simply a honor respect and a civil deference which you can use that that right there to apply to people that are right wing left wing and so on and so forth they have uh, civil deference uh, and, uh, they you know they worship politicians to put it quite simply right okay so anyways that's enough of that and I know I appreciate that, GG, but I just want to show you I'm not making stuff up. Following my first post, this is a prophecy, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. All right, so I think we're familiar with this. All right. IE is a prediction of what will happen, not something that was currently happening. If your version of worship was correct, and it is, this would already be happening, and it is. It's something that is going to happen. No, it's not. Which means this would not be a prophecy, but something that would already have been happening back then. A clear distinction is made. As I say in my previous post, your version of worship does not fall in line with what the Bible, what it means in the Bible. 
Yes, it does. I'm not making stuff up, GG. Come on. Once you worship the image, there is no going back. All right, so the image is, there are millions of images. All right, so the context of the image is the beast. The image of the beast. So the context is the beast. So it's a about worshiping the beast and what is the beast daniel defines a beast as a king and his kingdom so how do we apply that today it's government it's it's like uh if you live in the united states you know uh, a couple of years ago whatever uh, it would have been worshiping donald trump because he is the king of the government but above all kings there is one that rules over them as we read in Revelation 17, and that is the mother of harlots, and that's obviously the Pope, and that's the beast that Daniel's talking about, the fourth beast. Uh, the beast that was and is not and yet is. The one that went from the Caesar and transformed into the Pope. All right, now. I'm going to get fired up after a while. Okay, and then smoke right there at 14. And they have run on worship the beast in his image right there. Who worship the beast in his image and whosoever received the mark of his name. All right. And I am telling you, this is the beast is only the fourth beast. There is no other beast. It's the fourth beast of Daniel. And it can only be the Roman Empire or what is known today as the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah, maybe I should get into that a little later. Probably won't have time today, but in the in, here we go again. GG and the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness into the judgment of the great day. Unto, I'm sorry. The judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Notice the angels, what the angels did is compared to fornication. It's it's not the fornic it's not the fornication. It's the wickedness. These guys, first of all, in Sodom and Gomorrah, they were wicked. They were uh, you know, uh, all kinds of wicked. Uh, homosexuals and what have you. And they wanted to have sex with everything, including the angels. They wanted to have sex with the angels. And so these angels, which kept not their first estate, it's not at all talking about angels with peepees. The angels don't have peepees, period. They do not procreate. All right, if you had if you had angels with peepees, you'd have to have angels with wee wees, and you don't have that. And people are getting too caught up into things that just are not in the Bible. It's not there. There's no mention whatsoever of angels having sex. Period. And and even not even in no. There's no way to twist that. There's no way to twist that to make this mean angels were having sex. Verse seven. Not talking about angels having sex, period. All right. I made a post about evolution and the destruction of what it means to be a man and woman through various means we can see in society. I went on to explain there will be a guided evolution where the beast system will merge people with technology, and this is the rebuilding of the temple. I'm not sure. This, uh, I had again, third time, I'm telling you. The rebuilt temple was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mike in Ohio. Once again, I agree with you on the matter of the mark of the beast being spiritual, not physical. I shouldn't have said the bloodline. I actually meant those who were like Cain. I get it. I got you. Who was of that wicked one. Yep. That whole chapter of 1 John 3 is kind of where I was going with that comment between the righteous and unrighteous. God bless. Thanks for clar clarifying that. I appreciate that. All right, so oh, I gotta I gotta tackle this one, and then after I get hers, I will I'm gonna talk about uh, the Israeli thing. It's kind of important.